it's not a massive surprise that he's been dropped by Williams at all, is it? We all knew that it was going to happen. Were you surprised by the timing, though, Christian? No, not at all. I I, I was watching FP1 in Zambor, and, and as soon as that crash happened, I just thought the right that that's it now. That mm. I thought was the straw that broke the camel's back. And you the, soon, the writings on the wall because the car was in the wall. Because the, the car was in the wall. As soon as I thought, as soon as I saw that, I thought, I don't think he can come back from this now. I, I wonder whether, like mentally. Just the whole announcement. I don't know, just of, every... What, Carlos Sainz? Yeah, and just all of that happening, th- what was it, three weeks before he crashed, whether that had a bit of an impact, I don't know. But, um, I don't think it will have helped. I think going right back to the start when Logan was put in the Williams seat, uh, you know, you look at other drivers like Jack Dewan will be getting his opportunity next year. He had three seasons in F2. Logan had less. Maybe Logan could have benefited from a bit more junior series experience yeah i think he could but would other drivers have taken the opportunity to be promoted maybe a little bit early and shown more pace straight away yes they would you know we've seen we've spoken in the past about drivers making their debut really really young i i think it's unfortunate for logan i i I don't know him well i know him from speaking to him on this podcast and for a few other bits i've always really enjoyed talking to him always think he's a really nice guy want to wish him all the best because he's a hugely talented racing driver who i think will probably end up in indycar and go and do a fantastic job but i think the blunt reality is this is the top level of motorsport. This is the best of the best. And what we've seen with this podcast, you know, when we started last season and we were following the progress of Oscar Piastri and Logan Sargent as the rookies, they were both the first two drivers on this podcast. Mm. We've seen something very typical happening of of what happens in F1. Some people fly Mm. and rise like Oscar and some people ultimately don't make the cut like Logan. And unfortunately, he's not made the cut. and And I'm really sad about that. I think he'll be a lot happier doing something else. Yeah. Some We've talked about this before, haven't we? That actually it's not for everyone and it just sometimes doesn't work out. No, and, and it hasn't worked uh, out. And it's not the end of his racing career. Oh, no, but no. He is still one of the most talented, yeah. quickest drivers oh, in the world. To do what he has done. He's not disgraced himself at Williams. You know, to do what he has done. Mm. He is a huge talent. And there was also a lot of inaccurate reporting when he got the job because his predecessor, Nicholas Latifi, was in there at a time when Williams needed money and were getting sponsorship. No. And they were saying, oh, it's the same with Logan, or he's American and they're trying to attract the American fans. You know, he's an academy driver who they backed. And Mm. good for Williams for giving him a shot. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out in F1. We've seen that throughout the sports history. He's reached his dream. He made it for a bit. Like, okay, he's, you know, not winning but he got there and he competed in formula one not many people can say that they've done that i would also on a human level love to have him on the podcast still yeah, oh, I'd absolutely lo- I'd love to catch up with his story because i feel really invested in this guy now he's yeah. welcome and anytime you've had burgers with him in new york i've, had, I've, I've spent a lot of time with logan you have, yeah. i did the launch in new york with yeah, him yeah. Did, ate a burger with him in new york as well <laughs> so i'd like That's i'd love it. to ca- keep up with him because i think whatever he does next will be interesting yeah and he's clearly got a lot of fans Fans, and as we said, is one of the quickest drivers in the world. Mm. Just he just statistically is. He managed to get to the top, and it's very difficult, as we know from history of this sport. It's very difficult to stay there, isn't it? And the ones that do, it just actually shows just how amazing some of the all-time greats are. Oh, absolutely! To, you know, look at the your Fernando Alonso's and your Lewis Hamilton's. They're still yeah. doing it. Come on, then, Franco Colapinto. Tell us some stuff. Argentinian, that's what I know. 21 years old. 21, I know that now. He's Argentinian. He's 21. We've seen him this year because he drove at Silverstone in FP1. Uh, That's free practice one. Free practice one. Well done. You've always got to pick me up when I go to F1 geeky. Uh, He was a a respectable four-tenths off Alex Albon in that session. He also, that weekend, was racing in F2, where he was racing this weekend. Really difficult to combine an F2 weekend with an F1 weekend. So to get in the car and be four tenths off Alex is very impressive. He's had a very solid junior career, including winning Spanish F4 in 2019, third in Formula Renault uh, Europe Cup in 2020, and then um, raced in F3 in 22 and 23, fourth in F3 in 2023. And then he will leave the F2 championship this year in sixth place, having won a sprint race in Imola and been second in the feature race in Spain and Austria. So all in all, that adds up to a very, very solid junior career. 
and he's being given the chance at the very, very top level. Mm. Just to give a bit of context for those that might not know, how hard is it to make the podium in Formula 2? Really hard so because all the cars are the same for a start and Formula 2 is a chaotic series. So, yeah, to have that level, it's not coincidence that we're talking first in Spanish F4, third in the Formula Renault Europe Cup, as I say, fourth in F3 in 2023. These podiums, it shows a driver who's consistently competing up there at the top. That's why he gains backing from the likes of a Formula One team in Williams. It's not easy to achieve those results. It's so interesting, is it? Because we're not the only people that are surprised by oh, this I'm announcement surprised. at all. I'm surprised all. it's him. People weren't expecting it to be him. They, Mick Schumacher was rumoured, Liam Lawson, Kimi Antonelli. The, the two that were linked, well, three that were linked, because you're right, um, I don't. I, I think there was a, a desire to keep Kimi Antonelli in F2 to finish his F2 championship. So I don't think Mercedes would have been up for, say, sticking him in too early. I think they wanted to get him to finish the championship. It had James Valter knocked on the door of Toto Wolff and said, can we borrow him for the rest of the year? Liam Lawson, I believe conversations did happen about Liam Lawson to try and borrow him from Red Bull. I think Red Bull are conscious that might they need to make a change before the end of the season in a battle for the Constructors' Championship? Is it beyond... Is it off the table completely that Sergio Perez is replaced at Red Bull wow. before the end of the season? No, I don't think it is. Plus, you know, we saw Liam race last year because he's the reserve driver for two Formula One teams, <laughs> Red Bull and RB. Mm. So, you know, they didn't want to be left in a situation without a backup plan. Wow. Mick Schumacher is the one that looks to be, as I got on the plane in Zambort, looked to be the favourite. I think the fact that he's been passed up by Alpine for the seat next year by Jack Doohan, the fact that he didn't have a seat last year or this year, the fact he's again been passed up by Williams suggests that for whatever reason, these people making the decisions in Formula One just don't have faith in Mick. And so Williams have done what they did with Logan. They've gone, let's give an opportunity to one of our reserve drivers. And I've seen a few people say, well, it's silly because he's not going to race for Williams next year. No, of course he's not. But we don't know a situation where Williams will get one of their drivers stolen in the future and need a replacement. Mm. You know, Albon and Sainz, that could happen. We also, there is a spot on the grid available next year. Salber are still waiting on making their decision at who's going to partner Nico Hülkenberg. Bottas and Joe, both in the mix, neither of them confirmed. We've seen in the past when super sub appearances like Nick de Vries and teams go, actually, you're really good, aren't you? It's not beyond the realms of possibility. So it's really, really interesting and good for Williams for giving back into a young driver. So it's a good shop window for him, really. Great. The very there's, there's, best shop window. There, there, obviously, there's lots to lose, but really, there's nothing much to lose. It's not like he, he you know, he's not going to be driving for Williams next year because no, Scott's Carlos signs his seat. But it, it's another... to, to, to give you the other side of the argument, surely it might not be overly beneficial for him to just take him out of... Formula 2. That, that is an argument people will raise. He, again, I said with Logan earlier, he might have benefited from a bit more F2 experience and he's only done half a season in F2. So, yes, yeah. that is an argument you could put. But listen, they're not daft, these people. They, no. you know, no, they know they, what they're doing. Yeah, so listen, good for Williams. They've, they've given a young driver a chance and what a chance it is. It is indeed. Um, Afis... Afis Hag? Afis Hag, one of our listeners, has got in touch. He said, what will James Vowles be hoping that a less qualified driver than Logan will be able to do for them for the rest of the season? Well, let's use Zambort as an example. Alex had a great qualifying, um, was disqualified for a technical infringement, and that immediately eliminated Williams' chances of scoring points because Logan wasn't up there. And Logan was almost never on the pace of Alex. They need a driver that is going to be much more capable speed-wise of being closer to Alex because every point counts. And really, Williams have been driving one-handed. Alex has been the only one who looks capable of getting points. And also, they need someone not to crash as much. I think Logan's crash damage bill was too high. And I think maybe he'd have kept his seat to the end of the season if he was keeping it out the wall more often and just being off the pace. But once the two start to combine, I think that was writing on the wall for Logan. <laughs>